Hello, my name is Amog, and I'm here to talk about my internship on Nepalese tiger conservation. So, what is the problem? Well, there are Nepalese tigers, and they are endangered. And what's happening is there are ongoing um, human-tiger interactions, whereby these tigers are dying and there are humans being attacked. And what we want to do is find a way to allow them to coexist together. Um, and what we thought about is ha being able to track them. So um, we teamed up with the University of Oxford to create something called the Cargill device, which is this. Um, it's a small device. It basically can record audio. It's got a processor there. It's got some GPS, microphones. But what's more important is that it's low computational power, which allows us to easily mass produce quite a lot of them. And the idea was to deploy them across the, uh, the forest and having them basically detect audio across. And if there are sounds being detected, um, then it can kind of flag that area and create a map of what places um, the local population needs to avoid. Uh, my job was to write some software to actually be running on this hardware. Um, but the issue is that tigers don't make enough sound. <laughs> so what we had to look at instead was um, detection based on the prey, what we call prey alarm calls, which is animals uh, that make sounds based on the tiger's presence. So I looked at specifically the cheetah deers, which um, sounds like this, if it plays. OK, I guess not. Fair enough. It's all right. It's all right. So um, what? Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a bit complicated. But um, I, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so um, as, as you obviously heard, it's got a very specific, it's got a very specific sound profile that obviously the naked ear can, can hear. But more importantly, we can train a machine learning model to um, basically detect these sounds. It's got a specific profile that we can um, analyze. And th what we're doing is audio classification um, in an embedded environment, which means we're doing it on low powered hardware. And why this is interesting is because I'm trying to answer this question, which is, do you need expensive hardware to run an accurate machine learning model? Because nowadays, what we can do is just throw um, the huge um, model, a huge network with lots of CPUs, lots of RAM, and just run lots of data, put lots of data on that, and just see, can it work? However, what we're trying to do is prove that we can run it on this very small device. And if that's, if what we're trying to say is, can we do this and create something that's actually meaningful, um, even on cheap hardware, and if it's actually able to be deployed? So. The data set that I'm working with is around 26 files, one hour long each, so it's about 26 hours. It's manually labeled by experts. Um, it's basically got a time windows, uh, times between within the files of where these uh, calls are happening. But more importantly, we also labeled um, common false positives, so these oriole birds, which have a kind of a similar sound profile to the digital deers. However, we want to make sure that um, they are classed as negative. So um, what I looked at to begin with is something called MFCC values, which um, quite simply is just coefficients that characterize a sound window. So it's just numbers, basically. Um, and I created these uh, heat maps, um, which uh, are on the x-axis is time, and on the y-axis is these 12 coefficients. And the color basically represents the value at that point. Um, and I was trying to find patterns um, in, these, in these images. And basically, after doing a small investigation with a small sample size of around five, of five positives and five negatives, I concluded that there wasn't too much of a difference. Um, I looked at the mean square distance, and there wasn't too much of a difference to be able to train a model based upon. So what we looked at instead, which is the current model, is something called spectral image classification, which takes a sound window, like on the left, and it applies a, some sort of function onto that and generates these images. Um, on the x-axis is time again, but instead on the y-axis is frequency. Um, and what we try to look at is uh, convolutional neural networks, which is a type of machine learning uh, method that we can find patterns, basically, in this image. And what we did is basically convert an audio classification problem into an image classification problem, which is slightly more easier. Um, and so what we, I looked at is with the data set, I trained a model based on that data set. Um, it got some results. There was, it was decent. There was some, it was working a little bit, but there were obviously quite a bit of mistakes in that where it was detecting um, background noise as a, as a call. And so what I did was I relabeled them and I re-inputted that back into the data set 
to make sure it's making it's not going to be detecting these background noise. And I got a new model based on that. Um, and this is the results from that. So after processing around 26 hours of files, completely exhausting my computational power on my laptop, <laughs> having to ask the department for a much more powerful server to do some parallel processing, to basically testing all the files at the same time. Um, I got these results, so it's the, basically the false acceptance rate, which is basically the number of mistakes, was pretty much less than half in most of the files. As you can see, the red is before, and the blue is after, so it's pretty much it's gone down quite a lot. Um, this is definitely good enough for deployment in Nepal, which is a good, which is good. Uh, but what we haven't also taken into account is post-processing that's going to be happening on device. So things like the fact that these DIRs don't make a single calls within a uh, specific time frame. Instead, they make lots of calls within one. So what we can look at is kind of think about thresholds. So if a certain number of calls happen within that time frame, then we can class that as a positive um, call. So after that post-processing happening on device, we can have even better results. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for listening. Um, yeah.